grew up going to a Methodist church, and um, and I was really involved in it too. I was very involved. Um, I mean, whenever the doors were open, I was there. We were at everything. Um, I was. I loved my youth group. I, all of my friends were in youth group. Um, I would go on all the mission trips that we would do, and I mean, I just it was one of my like, it was one of my hobbies. It was one of my after school activities. But that's about where it stopped. Um, it was a hobby, and it was an after school activity, and. I was really involved in it on a social level, um, and I always considered myself to be a Christian. Um, you know, I believed in God, and I believed that Jesus had died for my sins, and um, and I can even remember the moment in my life um, between my junior and senior year. I was at church camp, and I remember thinking, like, like being brought to tears, thinking, like, oh man, like Jesus died for me, and I am. Like, I've done all these terrible things. Um, and, you know, just really like, and at that time, you know, being Methodist, I was like, well, that means that I'm a Christian now. And like, I want, like, Jesus lives in me. And like, and that's pretty much where it ended. And then after that, like, I continued through my senior year just to like, there are things that I did that just weren't necessarily like part of the Christian, a Christian lifestyle or how I should have been living. Um, I never really opened my Bible. Um, through, I mean, like I said, I was at church like two, three times a week, like very involved, literally like the leadership of my youth group and never opened my Bible. Um, I couldn't tell you anything outside of the basic like vacation Bible stories. Um, I mean, I knew some general stuff about the gospel and things like that. And I knew the general concept of it, but I just didn't know my Bible very well. Um, but I, and I remember like having that moment, like that conversion moment or whatever um, is how I felt about it at the time. Just, it still wasn't a priority to me, um, I guess. Um, and so I went through my senior year and then I went to college um, and I tried tried out for a bunch of different things, tried to get involved in a bunch of different things at school. Um, some of them didn't work out, some of them I just didn't make. Um, and it was stuff that I thought, you know, like I thought I was pretty qualified for this. Maybe I wasn't, I don't know. But <laughs> um, it was stuff that I thought, you know, after so many tries of get, trying to get into something, like I should have, I should have found a place by now, right? Like, um, and like I wasn't going to church, I wasn't involved in any kind of church group or anything like that. And this was probably like a month and a half into school as a freshman. Um, and all my friends were starting to find their places and different things like that and find their own like groups of friends outside of like high school friends. And I remember sitting in my dorm room one night by myself, like sobbing. Um, frantically flipping through my Bible, which I mean, I had taken with me. I had had all through school and I'd never really looked looked through. Um, just searching for something like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Um, and, you know, probably the next day, the next morning, um, one of my really good friends from high school who had grown up in the Church of Christ texted me and was like, hey, do you want to come to our Devo tonight? Um, and I hadn't even like talked to him about, you know, how I was feeling. Like I hadn't really talked to anybody about it because it's kind of embarrassing to be like, you know, oh, I didn't make this or I'm kind of lonely or whatever. Nobody wants to admit that they're lonely or that they're failing or something like that. Um, and I was like, yeah, I guess I'll go. And um, so I went and I really liked it. I thought, you know, it, it was just church to me. Like it was like going to youth group or whatever. Um, and I was like, I knew I should be going to church and like church is a good thing to do. It's a social thing. Um, it's the right thing to do when you're from the South or whatever, you know, like everybody goes to church. Um, so I enjoyed it and everybody was really nice to me and I met um, a lot of people that I really liked. And so I went back the next week and, um, you know, the next couple weeks I met Jeffrey. The things that Jim Brinkerhoff, who was the campus minister at Auburn at the time, things he was saying and the way that he like opened up the Bible to say them, to prove them, really started to make sense to me um because I, I mean I started to think like you know if I'm going to be a Christian and I'm going to believe that God created the world and I'm going to believe that he sent Jesus to save me and that this is his word his invaluable word then why am I not looking to his word to guide my life I mean that started to be like of course like why did I never think of this before after about a year and a half, um, in February 2012, I decided that I needed to be baptized. I, I had just finished like my morning 9 o'clock class and I went home to eat some lunch and I was like watching um, 
some TV episode that I missed from the night before, so my fat Netflix or whatever. Um, and like literally in the middle of like, I'm taking a bite of my food. I still remember I was eating Chinese food. I'll, like I'll never forget this day. I'm sitting there eating in the middle of an episode and I like put my fork down and I pause it. And I was like, I have to go get baptized right now. Um, I was like, that's what I, that's what I should have done by now. Like, what am I waiting on? I'm, it's a Tuesday afternoon. Um, and Jeffrey's not even in town. Like he's up in Huntsville and I'm in Auburn cause he's co-oping. Um, my, like I didn't even, one of my roommates, one of my good friends was home and like I didn't even stop to like knock on her door. I mean, I ran to my car and drove immediately to the church and was like, I've got to do this right now. And I, and I don't usually do things impulsively. I'm not a very impulsive person. I usually think about things for a long time. And, um, but it just, I, it just felt so important to me at that moment. And it was just kind of like, what, what am I doing? Um, like, does this matter to me? Like, do I, do I think that this is, worth the time that I'm devoting to it or not like that was the moment where I was like am I going to dedicate my life to serving God and to doing his will or am I going to dedicate my life to serving Deborah and doing her will um and you know I guess almost seven years later um I can just see how much that moment you know the moments that everything that I went through my freshman year of college and um up to that day that I decided to just like, to just completely turn my life over to God and say, okay, you know, I, I'm in your hands now. I am your hands now. Um, and my life is going to be yours and it's going to be about doing what you want me to do. Um, just the change and like the way that I see the world around me, um, the way that I view other people, the way that I view and value my relationships with other people. Um, it's just such an, it's such a, it's so different. Um, I mean, you wouldn't recognize me 10 years ago because it's just such a, the power that God has to change your life when you dedicate your life to Him and doing His will, it's just absolutely incredible. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost.